Hey everyone, in this video I want to show how I pull this effect up in Photoshop and how you can do it yourself. So before we start creating the effect, I just want to show what's really happening here. You can see right now I'm just using a normal pixel brush in Photoshop and I'm just basically drawing and it automatically make all these effects around my brush and I can even draw on top of that with another brush and even more to get different layers and you can even see I can just make a path like a Super Mario game with a single brush. So what's really happening? Well let's get into it. Alright so this is the bare bones of the effect and there's really not a whole lot to it when you look at it in the most pure form it has. I'm basically just drawing and whatever I draw creates an outline and a drop shadow. On the cliff side the drop shadow comes up the bottom part and in the hole it of course comes on the top side to give it the right perspective. But one of the main things that we want to avoid that I see a lot of people do and don't quite understand who's been trying to pull the effect of is that if you just do it with standard Photoshop drop shadow and inner glow and everything you'll end up getting these weird doubles and there is a way to get around that so you get it pixel perfect smooth looks with no sign of doubles or transparent pixels. So that's also something that I'll be covering out through the video as well. And then by the end when you apply all the effects you then get something along this way that looks really cool and you can just create a cool little map with it. So the first thing I want to create is the grass here. So I'm going to create a new layer and just pick a green color and I'll just paint and this is going to be my grass bit. So the next thing we want to do is go down on our layer here. I'm actually going to call it grass just so I know which one I'm working with. And then you'll double click on your layer and this window should pop up. This is where we're going to apply all the effects that you see basically. And the first thing I want to create is the stroke that you see around my grass field. You would think you would use the stroke feature but it's actually going to create this weird doubles and semi-transparent pixel all around it. And I haven't found a way to get rid of that using the stroke. So in this case we're actually going to use the inner shadow. You could also use inner glow, but we'll maybe get to the inner shadow later why that's more useful. Anyhow, there is a lot going on here if you're not experienced with Photoshop. And don't worry, I'll go over everything nice and slowly. So first off, you just want to set the blend mode to normal. And then after you want to choose the color for your stroke. In this case I'm going to use my black stroke like I did on the preview picture over here. The next thing you want to do is amp up the opacity all the way to 100%. And you see it still looks kind of weird uh, and not really having the look that we're going for. And then there is angle. It's really not any important when it comes to the stroke, so just leave it as it is for now. Now, down here is where the magic is happening. So the distance you want to set to zero, which makes the shadow comes from all around the green spot. Next up, you want to set the size to one. And then you want to set the choke all the way up to 100%. But hey Mord, you may say, it's still making those weird doubles and transparent pixels. And this is where the magic is really happening and what I recently realized, that you can actually make this completely pixel perfect. And you do that down in the contour down here. So you double click on the contour and this box should pop up. So let's put it over here to the side so I can see what I'm doing. And you just really want to drag in the center of the line here and drag all the way down to the corner. And you can see as I drag the line here how the preview of the grass is changing to pixel perfect, which is what we want when we're making pixel art and it's really nice. I really recommend that you now go in here and press new and this will create a new contour. Call this one pixel perfect smile face. If you want to, you don't have to add the smile face. <laughs> and then press OK. Because then if you ever have to use the contour again, you don't have to create it every time. You can just go down here and select it. And that is basically the stroke effect. So the next thing we want to create is the cliffside that you see here. And the way we go about that is going down here to drop shadow. And you can see it just makes this weird blurry shadow around us. So then again we have to make it pixel perfect. And the way we do that is 
of course again turning opacity all the way up to 100 change the blend mode to normal and then we come down to the angle this is where it gets a little bit tricky so you want to set the angle to 90 and then turn off global light because global light can maybe screw you over a little bit if you are not so used to working in Photoshop so if you are less experienced turn it off if you know what global light is keep it on. The next thing you want to do is set the spread down here to 100% again and then you want to set the distance to yeah I think 3 is fine let's just keep it like that and set the size to 0 and then we want to change the cliffside color and I'm just gonna select this brown color as well and just in case there might be some minor transparent pixels here that's really hard to see with the naked eye then we go down and take the contour to the one that we saved just click on that and that's how you have the cliff side as well so the next thing we want to apply is the grass texture that we see on top so for doing that if you don't already have a texture I'm just gonna create a quick one here so when you've drawn your texture what you do is going up here to the selection tool and then select everything when everything is selected you go up here to edit and then define pattern we'll call this one grass now you can just delete the layer that you created the texture with and if you already have a texture you can also do the same thing with that to apply it as a pattern now let's double click down on our grass section here again and then pattern overlay and I'll go down and find the texture that we just drew and that's basically how the cliffside was made if you want to make another cliff side on top of the other one, you can just draw on top of it. What you have to do now is go down here and right click on your grass layer and then copy layer style and then create a new layer and then go right click on it again and paste layer style and everything you draw on this layer now will have the exact same effect on it. So that's a quick way of duplicating the effect if you want to make more. Another thing you can also do is if you want to make the mountain even taller you can again make a new layer, paste the layer style again and I'm just gonna draw it next to the other bits here. Then go down and double click on the layer you want to have a taller mountain on. And then there is the drop shadow and you would think you would just go down and make the distance longer but you can see it will start doing this instead. The way I found to work around it is that I go down here and duplicate the drop shadow so I make a drop shadow more, take the second drop shadow and then just doubles the number so it's three right now then I'll make it six and depending on how tall you want it you just keep duplicating the drop shadow, take the latest version and then add the amount that your first one was. So the first one was 3 and this one is 6 so this one will of course be 9 and you can see by doing that you will make it look smooth even though it's a thin mountain. So the next thing we're going to create is this beach looking one and like the grass one we'll create a new layer call this one beach and then I'll just draw something that we can look at so we know we're doing it right so like the grass, we are just going down and double clicking on the beach here. And I want to start out by applying some texture to it. But to save a bit of time, I'm not going to draw a new tile and just use the one I already made. And then we already have something that looks a little bit like a beach. But we want to have this nice beach looking edge to it. Then the next thing we want to do is create an inner shadow. So I'm just going to click here. And like everything else, we're going to set the blend mode to normal, set the opacity to 100, select the beach edge color, I'm just gonna sample from preview, and then we're going to turn off the global light as well, and then set the angle to minus 90. The choker we're going to turn all the way up to 100, and the distance we're going to set down to 1, and the size we're probably going to set around 1 or 2, depending on how you want it to look. I'll personally have it on two, but you can see we still have those kind of anti-aliased and half-tone pixels there. So what we're going to do is again select the choker and 
use the choker that we saved earlier. And now it gets a crispy pixel look that's completely pixel perfect, which we like. And that's basically how you make the beach. So let's fill the white bit out here with water. But hey wait, it's not having this effect that we made. So next up, let's make that. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but also a little bit convenient. So I'll go down here now and create a new folder. That's the icon next to the new layer. And I'll call this one foundation. And then I'll drag the beach in there. And I'll also drag the first grass in there and make sure it's on top of my beach. Actually, let's select all the grass bits and drag them on top of the beach here. So they kind of look like they are one island. And let's select everything again and click on the folder. This way it should group everything into one folder. And I'll call this one test island. So just to go over what we have here, we have a first folder where everything is. This is our island. Then we have just two grass bits here. The foundation, which is the bits that's touching the water, which is grass and beach. And if we double click on the foundation folder, we'll get this menu up again. And we'll do something along the same ways as we did with creating all the other effects. Just this time we want to make it have that sort of edge of the water touching land and beach. Alright, so the first thing we want to apply is now a drop shadow again. We're using a whole lot of drop shadows today. I'm gonna go over it a little faster. It's more or less the same premises, but let's just do it here. So Blender to normal, set the opacity to 100, and then we'll select the water color. In this case, the edge of water is usually kind of whitish. And uh, we'll set the spread to 100 again, set the size to two and the distance to one and of course the contour we will select to our little pixel thing again you know what i might actually set the distance to, s to two and the size to one this is something you can play around with a little bit yourself i'm sure of i'll set the distance to one and the size to one and then i'll duplicate a drop shadow more so i'll make a new one by pressing on the plus sign take the one below and change the color to a little brighter version of the water so it looks more like an edge. And this time I'll set the distance to 2 and the size to 2. You know what, I might actually set the size to 3. Yeah, I think that looks nice. 4 maybe? 4 will do too. And everything I'll keep as it is. And there we go, now we have the water edge. And as you can see, it's only affecting everything inside the foundation. So if I draw on my grass too here, that is supposed to be on top of island, it doesn't happen. But if I'm drawing on anything that's inside the foundation, it will create that effect on everything. And then when I've drawn whatever I like, I can just select my test island here, and then it will automatically move everything within that folder, which both make it really nice and convenient, and also just makes it easier to keep track on if you're making more than one island. So the next thing we're going to create is this inward one, uh, basically a hole in the ground. And it's pretty much the same, uh, but I'll go over it real quickly as well. So let's copy one of the ones that we have created earlier here. So we'll copy the layer style from the one of the grass, create a new layer, call this layer grass hole. And then we'll just paint something on it so we know where it is. Paste the layer style onto the grass hole. <laughs> oh my god, Mort, why are you laughing at that? Uh, Alright, so let's double click on the grass hole. Remove the drop shadow. And this time we're going to apply another inner shadow. Now we have two inner shadows of the same, but we'll take the bottom one and we'll make the distance to 3 and sample the color of the cliffside. That way we get this inward looking one. So whenever we draw on this layer, it looks like it's actually creating a hole. So the last thing we're going to create is these sort of overworld levels and pathways. And the way we do that is again by creating a new layer. I'll call this overworld. 
And in here I'm just gonna make a little square that is, let's make it 16 by 16. And I'll fill it out with a black color. Remove the edges to give it a nice smooth corner. Then I'll select the entire thing here. And then go up to edit a define brush preset. The reason I'm doing that you'll see in just a second. And I'll call it overworld level. Now I can actually delete this. Select my overworld color. And now when I have the brush open, I can actually just draw these without having to redraw them all the time. So select an overworld tab and I'll take a round brush here and just make a little square next to it so I can see how they look. So to pull this effect off, it's quite simple. Double click on it. I go in here and make another drop shadow. Make it to normal, opacity 100. Make it to the dark color that I want. Set the spread to 100. Contour to the one that we pre-made earlier. Set the distance to zero and the size to one. And now we have this semi sort of nice looking border around it. If you wanted to drop down a little bit like I have here, you can just duplicate the drop shadow. And then on the second one, you can make the distance to one and it will look like it's a, have a bit of a perspective to it. So every time I draw on this layer now, let's take the brush that we made and just place some random levels around here. Let's make one out here on the islands. Let's make one here, one down here, one on the beach, one on the cliff and one of the skull. And let's remove those up there. Take my brush out again. Just take a normal brush and make it to two. That seems like a fine size. And now I can just draw some dots in between here. And it gets that semi looking overworld feel to it. And that is basically how I pulled all the effects off that I showed in my GIF. You can of course experiment with this, it doesn't have to be grass, you don't have to make beach, the water doesn't have to be water, it could be lava too. Uh, you can really apply any textures or colors to it that you want. In fact, you can actually go ahead and apply the effect to a vector map like I did here. You just want to make sure if you apply it to anything it has a complete crisp corner. If it have any soft edges it's gonna look weird. So if you do that, and you do everything right, you can apply it to something like a map of the UK or whatever you want to. And another thing I want to point out, even though we have all these things here and it's all made with effects, you can go ahead and make a new layer on top of it all and, you know, start drawing whatever you want to. If you want to have a little toad house here from Mario or whatever you feel like, you can do that. Or if you want to go ahead and edit some of this, like the cliff deer, for example. I don't like it, so I could do something like that. You know, I can go ahead and refine a few small edges if that is what I want to. That is really up to you. The option is there. So don't feel limited only by the effects. Be creative, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. And if you like what you saw in the video, give the video a little thumbs up. It's much appreciated. You can also support me on Patreon where you can help me help you. And I'll also post the source file from the tutorial in there. Alright, that's it. I'll see you guys around. Bye!